This video is all about Starlink. I'm going to give you some real honest information about the service, what's good, what's bad, and what you absolutely need to know if you've ever considered getting this or if you already own it and you don't think it's that good. Now I'm standing in front of the tower that I installed seven months ago. I made a video. I'll link it in the upper right. Now first off, Starlink is not my only internet provider here. There are no cable providers here, none at all. I can't get anything. I'm actually using a combination of Starlink along with T-Mobile home internet service. Now the first question is, why am I using two Two different internet services. Well, my entire job depends on being connected, along of course with you guys and my YouTube stuff, so I do not want to lose connectivity. But the other reason I chose to have two, because it is less expensive here with two providers than it was back in Massachusetts with one. Now down there I had gig internet through Verizon, but that cost me about $200 a month. Here I'm paying $110 a month for Starlink, and I chose to get T-Mobile home internet as well, so I'm only spending $160 a month. The first question I get all the time is what kind of speeds do you get on Starlink? Now that is going to depend somewhat on where you live and how much congestion they have for the satellites. When I run my speed test, I routinely get download speeds of two to 400 meg down. That's even during peak hours. I never see those speeds that people talk about where you're getting like 80 to 100 meg. Now when it comes to uploads, they are considerably slower, but I will almost always see from 20 meg up to about 40 meg, which are still really great speeds. Many of you who are current Starlink users do not have your system set up correctly. Now I say that because I spent a lot of time in those Facebook forums and people just go crazy. They're posting crazy speed tests that are wrong. It comes down to basic computer networking. Your Starlink has a router attached to the other end of that Starlink dish. You've got to have that router connected properly to your home network, but tons of people do it wrong. They show speed tests where they're measuring the speed of their phone to the router or something else and they just don't understand how it works. The only speed that you should be measuring is from the dish to the satellites. That is the true internet speed that you're getting. Once it gets past the router, that's on you. Where it gets messed up is people have crappy Wi-Fi or they have it set up wrong and they start to lose and dilute that speed. So you'll suddenly see that they're getting speeds of 10 meg, 20 meg. If you do the speed test correctly, you want to choose this advanced test. This tests the dish to the Starlink satellite. That is your main internet speed. From there, you have to determine what's going on in your home network. But there is a way you can cheat the system. What happens with the Starlink router is it puts out a Wi-Fi signal. Now you can connect to it via your phone, and for many people that's going to be just fine. But if you want the most speed possible, and I certainly do, you want to purchase a thing called their Ethernet adapter. It literally costs like 25 bucks, plugs into the bottom of the router, and this gives you a true Ethernet port. This completely bypasses Wi-Fi issues. From this Ethernet port, you can connect it to your own router. You can get an $80 Linksys or buy a $10,000 Cisco, whatever you want to get. Now here, I'm connecting my Ethernet adapter to a TP-Link router. I'm going to do a follow-up video in a couple of weeks showing you this whole setup in detail, but it's not really complicated and it's actually surprisingly affordable. The reason it's a better way to do it is, think about it, this little Starlink router only has a single antenna or it might have a couple of them inside, but it's not going to reach your entire house, so you need to extend it. Now they offer a mesh solution and that is a possibility, but I would prefer to use the Ethernet a port option and then do everything on my own. That allows me to pick my own router brand, however many antennas I want, and I don't have to pay Starlink anything extra for this service. And I found by using the Ethernet port, I have been able to double my speed compared to using their built-in Wi-Fi. Now that's a lot of info on speed, but speed is the most important thing of your internet service, so it's really worth talking about. And that's one of the biggest complaints. People will say, I can get cable internet for a gig speed for less money. Get it. There's no reason for you to get Starlink. Somewhere along the way, there was a huge disconnect with this, and people got it. That just never should have purchased a service. Again, if you can get a wired service, that will give you more speed for generally less money. Starlink was originally developed for people like me who live in the middle of nowhere and have no other option. The next question I get is, what about during storms, rain, does this thing even work? But in fact, I have had no issues at all. It has worked during rainstorms, snowstorms, tons of ice, hail. I have seen no disconnect. Now one trick that I did that you should too, if you're living in a snowy climate like me, is you want to make sure that your in-dish heater is on. Many people have no clue that inside this little plastic dish is actually a heating element. They do that because if the satellite dish was totally covered with ice or snow, it would definitely have the speed impacted or it wouldn't work at all. 
By default, the thing is set to auto. That means when it's supposedly snowing outside or icy, the dish will automatically turn on and it'll shut the heater off when it's done. But unfortunately, just like those self-driving Teslas, they screw up sometimes. And I don't want to leave that to chance and find out that the dish is iced up. So I went and chose this other option. This turns it to preheat. That means that it's going to be on all the time. Now, if you don't want to be using the power, you're completely on battery, then that might make a bigger impact on your life. Now what about just using the router the way it is? Is the Wi-Fi any good? Well, it absolutely is. If you're not uploading videos or doing heavy kind of streaming, things like that, go ahead and try to use it. You have no downside of trying it out. Now what about negatives? There's always stuff that's bad about everything, right? The first is, my Starlink dish one day moved. Now this is not what anyone was expecting. Typically in the US, when you got your Starlink system, you were told that your dish would automatically point around northeast or so, and it would align itself with the satellites by itself. You didn't have to do a thing. But then one day I came outside, my dish had completely turned, facing more of a westerly direction. Now that completely threw me. So I put in a support ticket to Starlink, and they gave me an official response saying that Starlink did reorient all of their dishes, or at least a majority of them, to point in a better direction for better reception. Because you need to keep in mind, Starlink is still firing up more rockets, more satellites, and as they do that, they're increasing the system's capacity. So the dish could possibly move somewhere else, but that could be a problem. Now when the dish repointed here, it wasn't a problem because my sky is open completely on that side. Had it pointed in the opposite direction, I've got these huge trees, and I would have really been out of luck. Now I have read a few messages from people that said that exact thing happened to them. The other thing that's pretty cool about the system is it can detect obstructions, so it knows where the trees are if there's something else in the way. So part of me is kind of hoping that the system scanned around and found the most unobstructed view. I don't know if that's really true. Some of you guys can comment down below if you know more about it, but I'm hoping they're doing it intelligently so that they don't essentially just turn the dish and lock you out of the system. Now day-to-day usage, my kids are streaming movies 4K, they're playing games, I do my YouTube stuff on there, lots of work on the system, and I don't generally have any problems. But there are some web pages and sites that seem to be more finicky with Starlink. Now Facebook is one of them. Sometimes the site kind of will half load, kind of bug out, and I've attributed that really to something with Starlink. I think that during the day, Starlink does encounter very, very small interruptions. When you look in the app, you can see these tiny interruptions, they're less than one second. Now generally when you're using your computer, a brief interruption will not be noticed. When you're watching a movie, things get cached up. So if you have an interruption, when that happens, it just skips over that and it's already downloaded enough so that your movie never even gets interrupted. But other things like Facebook, websites like eBay, they are always pulling data. So if there's any interruption, you might notice it and then it kind of messes the web page up or you have to reload it to keep going. That is one thing that I have regularly seen with Starlink. The next big negative is the one that made people go crazy, data caps. Starlink, when it was first introduced, had no limits, no speed limits, no data caps, nothing. You could do as much as you wanted, anytime you wanted. But now, if you're a current Starlink user, you might be shocked to find out you can still do as much as you want, anytime you want. You're allowed to download up to one terabyte of information per month. After you hit the one terabyte, they can, and that's the key word, can, throttle your speed. It doesn't mean they're going to throttle you to zero like your cell phone provider might do. They will reduce your speed if there's a lot of network congestion. But now what does that actually mean? Well, it's going to depend. If you're in an area that's not congested, you may never see anything. You could download 10 terabytes a month. But for most people, it's probably going to be a slight reduction, if any. But there's also a workaround. Anything you do after 11 o'clock at night is not counted. Now, of course, you can't change your life for things like that. But even on my own setup, I was shocked to learn that my backup system on my computer was doing the backup all day long. And I didn't really want that. So all I had to do was go into the scheduler, change it to backup starting at midnight, and now none of that data was being used. And that was pretty significant because my backup system was pushing about 200 gig a month. That's around 20% of my total data cap. You might be able to make small changes like that and move certain things to off-peak hours. That data does not count against your cap at all. I've got two little kids that are streaming movies, they play games, my wife uses YouTube, the internet, all this stuff, and I'm on the computer all day long. So we're using a lot of stuff. And even in my own systems, I'm still under that one terabyte limit a month. So when I go into the forums and I see people flipping out saying they're using five terabytes of data a month, Starlink is probably not the right system for you. I'm not judging what you're doing, but even in my IT world, five terabytes of transfers is a lot of data for a typical family. Now, if you're doing tons of gaming, downloading games, 
games, it is easier to hit those kind of limits. And if you're in that small percentage of people, they do give you an option where you can buy more prepaid amounts of terabytes of transfers at full speed. But my advice is use the service as much as you can. If those things become a problem for you, then take a look at possibly buying those prepaid data download hours. But the more important thing is look at what's going on. Can you stream? Can you play games still? Can you download? If those things are all working, don't really get hung up on just your speed transfers because you can't control that. As more users come on the system, the speed is going to go down. But I see every month they are launching more satellites and every launch potentially gives you more bandwidth. So I would just kind of wait it out a little bit longer instead of going nuts and see if the system is still working for you. Now when it comes to being a consumer, I am tough man. If I get ripped off, I go crazy. And I'm going to do a video on this to share some of the tactics that I use to make sure that I'm getting what I'm paying for from companies. So if you are paying for the Starlink service, your stuff is set up correctly, and you're not getting the speeds or the performance you want, put a ticket in. Make sure that you're reaching out to them to see what's going on. I'm no super fan of Elon Musk or Starlink or any of that. I just want a solid internet service. And for me, Starlink has worked really, really well. And I think if you follow some of these things that I've shared in the video and really truly look at what you've got, because most people don't. They just blame the system, they don't look at any of their own computer equipment, and they just don't really want to take responsibility for what might be their own problem or some combination of the two. So after six months of using the Starlink system, I can tell you guys that I absolutely love it. I am thrilled with the reliability. In fact, I'm amazed that it does work during the kind of storms that we've had. And I do think one of the keys is using that Ethernet adapter. Don't just rely on the internal Wi-Fi stuff inside this box. Go ahead and bridge it out to another router. Connect your own stuff so that you can control the Wi-Fi completely. So I hope this video has shared some info about my Starlink setup. I am absolutely thrilled with it. But if you're not, I would definitely like to hear from you below. Or if you're a happy user, go ahead and let me know what's working for you or maybe what ideas you might have about improving the system for others.